Hey Bullfroggers, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to show you the tweaks I made to my new chainsaw mill. I had been borrowing a Granberg from a friend, but I decided it was time to buy my own. Almost all the tweaks you'll see in this video apply to both inexpensive Chinese knockoffs and top-of-the-line Granberg mills. And all but one can be made without any special tools or equipment, just a trip to your local hardware store. Let's get to it. First, I added split ring lock washers to every nut. Chainsaws generate a considerable amount of vibration, so lock washers are a must. Only one lock washer here on this side. Doesn't matter what side you pick, but only one and do all of your loosening or tightening on the side with the lock washer. By the way, don't waste your time with any lock washer or lock nut other than the split ring or nylon lock nuts. Check out this video I recently watched for an excellent analysis of lock washers and lock nuts. You can probably buy all the split ring washers you need for the price of just a couple of my lock nuts. Just saying. Next, I shortened the stabilizer bar by about 1 16th and added a slight radius to prevent binding. Uh, I used my disc sander, but a file will work too. I replaced all four nuts on the stabilizer bar. These two were replaced with knobs to allow for quick tool-free access and adjustment of the bar. More on that in a minute. These two, the inner two, were replaced with regular N8 nuts. Then the bolts were cut off flush to prevent interference with the knob. As for the knobs, metric knobs are nearly impossible to find here in the U.S. So I used 5 16th knobs and I replaced the metric carriage bolts with 5 16th by 1 inch carriage bolts. Of course, all four connections got lock washers as well. Due to the funky shape here, I added a bunch of flat washers to provide a nice flat clamping surface for the knob. This bar is clamped to the mill here and it's the same thing on the other end. Now there's two problems with that arrangement. First of all, the opening was way too loose. This bar just slid all the way through there. And secondly, the Phillips head screw that came with this, there's no way you were going to get enough torque uh, to squeeze that tight enough. So I replaced the Phillips head screw with a metric hex head bolt. I believe it was M5. You could certainly use a uh, standard nut and bolt there, but this came with a little uh, nylock nut there, so I just grabbed a metric hex bolt there. The other thing I did is, I don't know if you can see on the camera, if you look really close, I had to put a shim in there, and um, I just used a piece of soda can and cut it with the scissors, and now it clamps in there good and tight. To prevent these square tubes from deforming under pressure, I inserted some small blocks here. Just measure the size of the tubing, cut the pieces from some scrap wood. For best results, orient the grain vertically, then drill an oversized hole for the bolt. I'm not sure that the grain thing matters, but that's what I did. The rubber grip on this handle came with the finger grooves facing the wrong way. Oddly enough, Every knockoff mill I've seen online has the same issue. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. But I tossed this entire handle in the freezer overnight, then put, the, put this in a vise and turned this with the channel lock pliers. I'm going to try covering the end of the handle here with the tennis ball next time I cut. I think that'll be a little more comfortable on the palm of my hand. The final tweak does require a welder but I'm certain it will be well worth the small expense at your local welding shop in order to avoid the hassles caused by this really obvious design flaw. Let's take a look. These bolts clamp the chainsaw bar to the mill. Originally, the nuts were welded to the bottom and you, you had to tighten the bolt on the top to clamp the bar. Well, this post interferes with your wrench. So this was a terrible design. So I ground the nuts off of this side and had my buddy tack weld four new M8 nuts on the top. Now I can tighten or loosen from this side without any interference. That's important because clamping the saw in the mill is a hassle, especially with longer bars. By the way, don't forget lock washers here as well. 
On both mills I've used, adjusting the depth of cut is extremely clunky. This thing always seems to bind and stick and move, and it's really difficult to get it exactly where you want it. So I would highly recommend making some spacers for the thicknesses you most often cut. Be sure to cut the spacers oversized to account for the teeth sitting proud of the bar. My teeth work out to be about 1 16th. So my bar, this spacer, is 1 16th bigger than 5 quarters. I made all these tweaks before using the mill for the first time, except the welding the clamp nuts. For the first session, I cut 10 sweet cherry slabs and the mill performed flawlessly. Whether you're running a $70 Chinese knockoff or a top of the line Gramberg, I highly recommend pimping out your mill. It'll work better, faster, and easier. Please let me know what you think down in the comments and if you've done any other tweaks to your mill, I'd like to hear about those as well. That's all for today, Bullfroggers. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Bullfrog Pond Shop. Cut straight.